All right, so today we are going to learn about how does a Tesla car battery work. Uh, Tesla is a car manufacturer uh, built out of California that was founded in 2003. Now, they are the largest and fastest growing electric vehicle manufacturer in the world. It's pretty cool. This bad boy right here, this is called the Model 3, and it's the base model. So what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, base price is $40,000, and it goes 0 to 60 in literally just 3.5 seconds. So it's pretty quick. Uh, it is amazing and stunning to think that this piece of piece of art, piece of machinery, could be powered with something just a little bit more complicated than your day-to-day double A battery. So in a battery you have three major parts. Normally you have your anode down here, you have your electrolyte, and then you have your cathode. Now this anode stores a negative charge, cathode stores a positive charge, and then the electrolyte just keeps the two from mixing. And all a battery is really is the transfer of electrons from high potential to low potential. And when the electrons move through something that can use electrons, they power it. So in this case, you have your light bulb, you can power a car, you can power our computers, power anything you want. So different batteries are made from different elements. For example, this one here we see it has zinc and silver. Down here in the electro electrochemical potential chart, we have zinc and silver. The difference between those two is 2.45 volts. So that's how much voltage is transferred across this potential. Now, when you run out of electrons, you're going to have to recharge your battery. Basically, all that's doing is plugging electrons back into the cathode via electricity, and those are transferred down from low potential to high potential and are stored back on the anode. So you're able to uh, use that battery again. Uh, back to the electrical electrochemical potential chart, lithium is uh, the element with the highest electrochemical potential at 3.04 volts. That is why Tesla uses the lithium ion battery. Now it looks kind of daunting, but it's pretty simple. Basically, you're gonna have your three main components. Again, you have your cathode, you have your electrolyte, and then you have your anode. Now I'm sure you're wondering, what is this like gray shaded area? That is just a graphite solution. It is used to stabilize the lithium anions. Now, just like in the, the battery above, the electrons cannot penetrate the electrolyte, so they have to find an easier way to the cathode. And that is going to be through this Tesla. So they're going to go from high potential down to low potential. And on their way, they're going to, they're going to power this Tesla. Now, <clears throat> these guys, the anions, once they lose their electrons, they're going to flow through this electrolyte membrane, and then they're going to be cations. When all of the when all of these guys flow through the membrane, then the battery is discharged. You're going to be stranded in the middle of the road. And that's what this is depicting here. All of them are cations in the cathode. Nothing is in the anode. Now, just a little bit about the the Tesla battery. Um, it's, 
it's actually amazing the technology they have in the Model 3, the base model, 2,976 individual cells. This is something different from other elect, uh, electric vehicle manufacturers in that they have so many individual cells, which is actually really good because it prevents overheating. If all of the heat is di distributed evenly amongst all of these cells, then you're not going to get very much strain on the whole system. So they're compartmentalized into four different sections. One, two, three, four. And all of this in a whole is a battery battery pack. Now, when you're flooring your Tesla, uh, you're going to be discharging these batteries pretty rapidly. So they run a coolant through here to make sure that you don't overheat. Now the base model is the battery is rated for 50 kilowatt hours. The EPA has said that a Tesla will go 3.84 miles per kilowatt hour. So in this specific model, you're going to get 207.36 give or take miles of range before you need to charge up your battery again. When you need to do that, you go to these supercharging stations. Basically, you are just plugging electrons back into the car. So electrons are going to flow through this gradient again, back to the anode. And these lithium cations are going to travel again through the electrolyte membrane. And then I'll just draw a couple of them here. I can draw a circle. Yep, so you're going to have now these lithium anions. Once all of the cations, sorry, once all of these cations move through here, then you're going to have a fully charged Tesla ready to go again. Now, something really cool that these electric vehicles do, it's called regenerative braking. Basically, what it is, is a Tesla, the battery will power a motor, and the motor um, will put current into a coil, um, and this coil spins around and um, rotates this magnet, which in turn rotates the wheels. Now, when you're not using the battery to power the generator, to power, to move this coil, to move the wheels, it's going to be the opposite effect. So when these wheels are turning, you're going to induce a current on this coil, which is going to, therefore, put current and charges back into the battery. So that's how regenerative braking works. And in essence, that's how a Tesla car battery works. Pretty amazing vehicle.